Happy Holidays, and welcome back to Weekly Wordplay. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages. Although it's almost over, I couldn't let Christmas go by without unwrapping a few linguistic oddities common this time of year. A time of great old traditions that date back centuries, even millennia. Along with that, our vocabulary gets a little old-fashioned. Ancient, nearly archaic words resurface, especially in some of the old Christmas carols popular this time of year. And no, I don't mean the Latin songs you sing at church, traditional English songs. In today's video, I want to point out and explain a few of these oldies but goodies, starting with the omnipresent Mary. What does it actually mean? And why do we insist on greeting each other with Merry Christmas when even the British prefer Happy Christmas? Mary, not the Holy Virgin, is an adjective, and it comes to us from an Old English word for pleasant or delightful. It has shifted a little in meaning over the years to now describe, most commonly, people who are enjoying delightful things. People who are festively joyous, laughingly happy, or mirthful. Mirth, like joy, is a synonym for happy. In other words, if you're merry, you're not only happy, but in the mood to party. You want to laugh and have fun, like in our sample sentence. Everyone made merry at the party, singing, dancing, and having fun. They had such a merry time that they promised to do it again soon. You'll notice I use the word twice. To make merry is an idiom meaning to have a good time. In the second sentence, it's used just as a simple adjective, no Christmas attached. So why do we here in the United States prefer merry to happy? Historically, it's because we Americans are better at having a good time. Seriously, the stoic English elite 200 years ago disapproved of big wild parties around Christmas time and therefore thought that the traditional use of Mary was inappropriate. You were allowed to be happy as long as you weren't too happy. You couldn't show it. Let's look at a couple of Christmas carols. First, we have God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, which, despite some really old language, is only 200 years old. It's amazing how much difference a few centuries can make. In case you're not familiar with the popular tune, it starts, God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Some carols are very religious, while others are more secular, not religious. This one falls into the first category, so please don't be offended if I take a few moments to dissect these lyrics a bit. God rest ye merry has really strange word order. Ye is an old version of you, or y'all, the plural of thou. And of course, me, uh, merry means very happy. So we could translate this first line as, may God give you rest and bring you joy, gentlemen. In the second line, dismay means to lose one's courage or hope. May, at its core, means to be able to do something, right? But if you give up, you can't accomplish anything. So the song says, don't let anything scare you. Why? Because Jesus was born, uh, as the rest of the stanza explains, he'll save us from Satan when we go astray. Astray is don't follow the rules, go off the, off the road. Tidings of comfort and joy are news, tidings means news, of good things. One more song, a little more secular, is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas, let your heart be light. From now on our troubles will be out of sight. Let your heart be light is a metaphor for being happy, 
not depressed. Our troubles will be out of sight. And of course, as the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. If you can't see it, don't worry about it. Just have fun and enjoy the season. The second stanza of that song continues. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. And that brings us to our next word, gay. Another adjective, this time from Old French, it originally meant joyful. More specifically, in a merry, light-hearted mood. Before that, it also meant pretty, which gave us the meaning bright or showy. So let's look at our sample sentence. The pretty gay lights lifted my spirits and put me in a happy gay mood. The lights are bright and beautiful. The people are in a festive mood. So both can be described as gay, technically. At least this was the case for a very long time. By the late 1800s, however, the word started shifting to describe people who were uh, too in, uh, into their entertainment. Uh, they took things too far, especially when it came to sex. Given to pleasures, having loose morals. That last one, having loose morals, is a nice way to say that you don't do what you're supposed to do. Okay, you do what you want, however you want to do it, even if the church does not agree. Homosexuals started using the term informally to describe themselves in the 1920s, but it took a couple of decades more to really embed itself in the public's vocabulary. That's why have yourself a Merry Christmas was still comfortable using that term for a family movie in 1943. The same is true for I feel pretty, oh so pretty, I feel pretty and witty and gay, sung by Maria in the 1961 musical West Side Story. And even the Flintstones theme song, the children's cartoon, that aired until 1966, and it ends with, we'll have a gay old time. All right. So this word was everywhere not that long ago, but you can't use it like that anymore. We'll sing the old songs and honor the way they were written, but don't go around saying my sentence um, because if you say that someone's lights look gay, it's an insult. A gay mood has an entirely different connotation. Best for the bedroom, if you get my drift, okay? In theory, this is a good sentence. It's just not uh, culturally acceptable nowadays. And I understand that that's a little complicated, but you know, the rule's pretty simple, right? When you speak as a non-native speaker, uncomfortable, just basically anyone in general, <laughs> don't use gay for anything other than homosexuals in, in the present uh, day. But understand that you might hear or see the word used differently by others. That's true with plenty of words out there, okay? So you use it one way, but understand that not everyone does it does it the same way. Okay? With that in mind, let me share one more Christmas carol. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. Let's review these lyrics. Deck means here actually to decorate, and halls uh, could mean anything from a large public room to a lobby to a hallway. Boughs are tree branches, and holly is a special plant with red berries, very common in Christmas. Um, Tis in the next line is the same as it's, short for it is, and jolly is the same thing for merry. It is the season to be joyful or it's the time to party. Dawn means to put on, for example, apparel, which is clothing. 
Gay apparel, in particular, is bright, festive clothing. Finally, trolling, though not very common at all anymore, means to sing loudly with a full rolling voice. So, in short, the music is encouraging everyone to decorate the house, dress nice, sing loud, and be happy. Not gay. Of course, it being supposedly the most wonderful time of the year, there are plenty more synonyms for merry and gay than even the bunch we've already mentioned, like joyful, joyous, delightful, festive, jolly, and mirthful. Cheerful and gleeful mean that you're full of cheer, things that bring joy and glee, open delight. Convivial is a much more formal way of describing a person as friendly and fun-loving, or a situation that is agreeable, literally livable. Have you ever had a riotous, rollicking, rip-roaring time? It's almost as fun as saying all that together. Nah, it's better. Super fun. <laughs> Even though the words have mixed connotations sometimes, riots are usually a bad thing, with big mobs of people stealing and breaking things in the street. Nonetheless, riotous can have a more positive connotation. Rip-roaring, related to uproar, also refers to wild, chaotic fun. But rollicking, at least, just means happily carefree. No, no worries. Uh, although not worrying about things it probably is what leads to the other two. The last two I have for you today, frolicsome and winsome, are much less common. Although you occasionally hear frolic as a verb, meaning to play like children without a care in the world. Let's go frolic together. Winsome is also very innocent, as opposed to gay. A winsome smile, for example, is sweet and charming. It's when your daughter opens up her presents for Christmas morning and has a big, childlike grin. Nothing bad about that. Winsome. We're all on vacation, right? So I'll keep the homework simple this week. Just write me a sentence or two using the new vocabulary. Share it in the comments or send me an email. Include any other merry words or idioms you've heard this season as well. As they say, the more the merrier. And with that, I will let you get back to your gay festivities. I mean winsome. Go frolic and make merry. And I'll see you again next week as we bid adieu or say goodbye to the old year. Until then, I've got plenty of other videos to share at my website apexlanguages.com. Thank you as always for watching. Wishing you all the merriest of Christmases or whatever else you celebrate. Stay happy, healthy, and safe, my friends. Especially warm.